I'm holding in my hand probably the most benign camera on the Astro Imaging market, but in my opinion that criticism is undeserved. The ASI 294 Pro is a fabulous camera and you can produce some amazing images with it at a very decent price. But it does need attention to detail when processing its images to get the best out of it. Today's video I'm going to show you what you need to stop doing when processing data from this camera and what you need to start doing to ensure success. I'll give my five top tips for success that have helped many tame their unruly ASA 294 data. This could be controversial, so hold on to your hats. Hey everybody, my name is Simon, welcome to AstroWorks, your friendly guide to the world of astronomy, where you can find lots of hints and tips on how to get the best out of this amazing hobby. The ASI 294 series is one of the most popular cameras from the ZWO range, but since its release it seems to be a camera that polarises the astro imaging community, with some just loving it and others well, it almost seems to border on hate. But after spending many years helping users with ASI 294 processing issues, I thought I'd get around to doing this long overdue video. I hope this guidance here helps others overcome their challenges processing data from this camera, and also put to bed some of the badly aimed and, in my opinion, wholly incorrect criticism of this camera. So what actually is the issue at hand? Well, when the ASI 294 Pro was first released back in 2017, it was the world's first cooled colour four-third format camera, and it took the astrophotography world by storm. It became an extremely popular camera, and even today, over five years later, it still sells very well due to its price, its very sensitive sensor, and its decent-sized chip. In 2019, Optolong released the Ellen Hans dual-band filter to the market. One of the first filters that allowed colour cameras to image narrowband targets, having bandpass coatings aligned to the HA and O3 parts of the optical spectrum. These popular filters caught on, allowing images to use colour cameras to image narrowband targets without the fuss and expense of filter wheels and monochrome cameras. This was followed by a whole heap of different manufacturers introducing dual, triple and even quad band filters. But some users have found that the using these filters on the ASI 294 problematic, and if you hang around the Astro Imaging forums long enough, you'll surely come across some of these conversations. The biggest issue comes from the uneven flats that are produced by the 294 and these multiband filters. These cause the, cause the camera and filter manufacturers headaches, with users unhappy with the results and vendors having to deal with these issues, who also may not understand what's going on or even how to deal with them. These unusual flats come from an interaction of filters with the sensor glass that causes uneven flats to appear. The later 294mm also suffers from this, but usually only occurs in some filters and not on others. Now, these uneven flats are not the result of poor construction by the camera manufacturers or poor coatings by the filter creators, but merely an unfortunate combination of filter bandwidths and sensor materials. These unusual flats lead some users to encounter gradients in their final images and the inability by some to process these out created many heated discussions on forums, unhappy customers approaching vendors and some YouTubers jumping on what they thought was a controversial and, of course, appealing topic to pull apart. This has raged on for many years and I constantly get buyers approaching me for support thinking their cameras are faulty and yet missing some key information to help them resolve this themselves. Exactly how do you tame the ASI 294 Pro? Well, here's my top tips and process guide for trouble-free imaging of the ASI 294. Tip 1 in successful ASI 294 image processing is capturing good flats. That starts by using the best light source available, a flat panel. And by that I mean a panel that has a well-balanced light output. What do I mean by well-balanced? Well, one where the red, green and the blue channels are closely aligned. Tablets, for example, are poor for flats as their colour balance is usually skewed to red or blue. This avoids blue light, which is known to have effects on the human body. If you have a light source skewed to either blue or red, then most software is not clever enough to understand this offset, and this can lead to under or overexposed flats as a result. 
Now some users will also tell you that the colour spectrum in flats does not matter and I have to disagree with that, having seen enough evidence that a good balanced light source is critical to success with this camera. My advice is also to avoid using sky flats or t-shirt flats and buy a proper well-balanced panel. Your camera will thank you for it and they will add tremendous value to your imaging setup and will last many years. The best light source I have found so far in the market is the Spiker Flat panel. This is a very well balanced channels and will give the best quality flats you can get. You should also buy the dimmer for the Spiker Flat, but more about that later. You can also find other flat panels on the Astro market too, and even some built into flip flat panels. So whatever you buy, make sure that the channels are well balanced to avoid issues with the ASI 294 flats. Once you have a good light source, you can aim for an exposure level that sits around mid-range on the image's histogram, and you'll then know that the flats will be spot on in terms of exposure and colour balance. For the more expert user, that is a target ADU value of 28,000. Now for tip two, choosing the right calibration approach for the ASI 294. Choosing the right calibration files and image processing approach for the ASI 294 is critical. A typical characteristic of the 294 sensor is the appearance of amp glow in images. Again, this is hugely overplayed on forums and on Facebook and is absolutely not an issue if you know how to deal with it. But it can skew processing software as the amp glow upsets the calibration process. But it's easy to deal with. Firstly, do not use bias frames with the ASI 294 and do use dark frame calibration of your flats. Now I don't care what you refer to them as, these really have been one of the silliest arguments on the internet since the technique was created. And you can call them what you like, flat darks, dark flax, who cares. But let's look at the process and why they help the 294. Dark frame calibration of your flats requires a set of darks that match your flat frame's exposures in length and gain. Using short duration darks you can calibrate the flats to remove the bias signal and also the thermal defects such as amp glow, leaving you with a nice clean set of flats without this unwanted response, which helps when calibrating and then integrating your data. Whilst on the subject, there was a great piece of investigative work done on Cloudy Nights by J.D. Upton. His extensive work deduced that image frames from the 294 shorter than 3 seconds varied in quality, and his advice was not to use frames shorter than this. You can certainly test this theory for yourself. If you do short exposure frames on some CMOS cameras, you'll find some strange banding and noise in them, and the average values of signals with them does jump around. So I strongly recommend you follow the advice and use a minimum of 3 second exposures. Of course, with this length of frame, you also want to dim the panel to make this work. Now you can see why I advise you to buy the dimmer. That's tip 3. Use a minimum of 3 second exposures. Ah, here's another controversial point. Many people will tell you that when taking flats, cameras don't need to be cooled. And again, I really don't agree with this. As before, you can test this theory by taking a flat with an uncooled camera and then taking it cooled and you'll see a significant difference in the flat's quality. Tip 4 is all about attention to detail. Personally, I've paid attention to small details like these outlines since day one and never had an issue processing data from this camera. I've even tested supposedly faulty cameras and was able to produce good images from them. So I strongly suggest you pay a close attention to detail, consider cooling the camera for calibration, and keeping to the same gains, offsets, and temperatures as your lights. And don't forget those short darks. All these will pay dividends in the end. Okay, so if we're not using BIOS and just using dark flats, how do we process our data? Well, in a nutshell, Capture the short exposure darks and create a master with these. Calibrate your flats using this dark master and then integrate the calibrated flats also into a master. Now take darks that match the lights in terms of gain, offset, temperature and exposure as normal and integrate these also into a master. Now you can take this master flat, the full length master dark and the lights into your processing software and integrate as normal. I'll put my processing flowchart in the description for you to download as well. And here's tip 5. 
a very important one, when integrating the darks, don't apply any optimization at all, as all the darks should all match and it shouldn't be needed. If you apply that, it will really upset your calibration files and definitely untick anything that mentions optimization before you start. So here's a free bonus tip. You will find this process requires a lot of manual manipulation of the calibration files, and one of the reasons I use masters. You can tuck the master darks away and reuse those. I personally keep my filters and cameras clean, and so I don't rebuild flats very often either, and this works pretty well. One thing you will find is that whatever software you choose to process your data in, it needs to allow for some good manual manipulation of settings. I use Insight for this very reason and you'll have to do some research on how your own processing software works in this respect to find those settings. So that's it. These key tips and advice have helped many people overcome their processing issues with the ASI 294 and produce some fabulous results from this camera regardless of what filter they use. Tyler and I created Astroworks to create videos like this so that newcomers and intermediate images like you have the knowledge at hand to make them more successful in what at times can be a very technically challenging hobby. If you like what we do and you want more of this kind of material then we highly recommend you subscribe so that we can notify you of new content as soon as we publish it. We're also very keen to hear if you have a particular topic or problem or issue you'd like to see featured. So do give that like button a thumb so that we know this video hit the mark with you. So here's a recap of my top tips for trouble-free ASI 294 image processing. Firstly, ensure your light source is well balanced, avoid tablets, t-shirt flats and sky flats as light sources, and go out and treat yourself to that flat panel. Use dark frame calibration of flats and forget bias frames with the 294 series. Don't use less than 3 second exposures on 294 cameras as this can lead to inconsistent values in ADU and strange results. Go read JD Upton's comprehensive report on cloudy nights for an insight into that effect. Do pay close attention to matching calibration frames to lights and be meticulous in your attention to detail. Look to match gains, offset, exposure lengths, and in my opinion, sensor temperatures. And finally, don't apply any optimization to data frames. Keep it all matching and you won't need to worry about using that anyway. The advice here is based on many years of real world experience helping users successfully overcome issues processing ASI 294 data with a simple reproducible process that removes these issues and leaves users to enjoy a fabulous camera that the ASI 294 really is. It's all about attention to detail. so. Don't cut corners in processing your data, especially if you're new to the hobby. On a final note, much of the advice here also relates directly to the ASI 294 monochrome cameras, as this can suffer from similar mottling of flats. I'm happy to report that this process also works perfectly on this camera if you follow this simple and easy to follow guide. We hope this video has been helpful. Look out for more from Astroworks, your friendly guide to the world of astronomy. Until next time, I'm Simon. We wish you clear skies.